What was the most satisfying time where you caught someone lying? I travel for work. I 90% of the time park in economy at the airport. I think $14 per day. About a 10 to 15 minutes walk. A few times out of necessity to catch a flight I park in the garage. I think $24 per day. 5 minutes walk. Usually 2 to 3 day trips. Not a huge expense. My boss suggests I park in off-site shuttle parking. About $11 a day. But a pain in the butt as you need a bunch more time to plan for the shuttle. He said he does it. Because it is cheaper for the company. Which he owns. One day while walking through the garage from on-site economy. They're in the reserved parking. Closest and like $40 per day. Is my boss's truck. And reserve takes planning. He wasn't just running late and needed to park in the garage to make a flight. I just put my business card under his wiper. I never brought it up. And I haven't heard any complaints about parking on my expense reports since. I love the elegance of your method. Oh boy. So in college I had this friend who was a very good pole vaulter. Seriously. One of the top in the state for his division. This was back in 2008. He tells all of his family and friends and even his boss that he was recruited to compete in the Beijing Olympics. Well his close friends, including myself already call bulls but when the day comes he is nowhere to be found. In fact, we didn't see him for a couple of days, and he started texting pics from Beijing. So we were doubting ourselves a bit. Then we were driving along the freeway, and guess who's broken down on the side of the road like two days after he left? Mr. Olympian. When we pulled over the look on his face was priceless. He stood by his story too, and said because of the time difference he already went and came back. Haha <laughs> he's a freaking idiot. I still don't know what he had to gain from such an elaborate bull's story. I work at a daycare. If a child is sick they will be sent home cause we don't want to risk infecting the whole class. Generally happens anyway. A lot parents don't agree with this policy which leads to parents arguing with us that their kid isn't sick when they obviously are. My favorite time this happened was when a mother dropped her little boy off in an eye patch. Yet the toddler was wearing a dang eye patch. I ask what happened and she says he hit his eye or something. Which I didn't really believe. She says whatever I do don't take off his eye patch. I pick him up and immediately lift up his eye patch. Pink eye. She was so rupee at me for doing that. And she was shocked I did it. The look on her face was so satisfying. Although I got yelled at by my supervisor for it. Should have asked the super whether they'd rather have 1p of parent or 30. I used to work at a grocery store. One of my co-workers was constantly calling in sick. Claiming she had one illness or another. Management couldn't just con her for it as it was a union shop. So she had protection unless she could be caught in a bald faced and indefensible lie. One Friday I get called in to cover her shift because she called in claiming she was very sick and needed a kidney transplant. On her next shift on Monday she's wandering around with gauze wrapped around her stomach and back claiming that she had that kidney transplant on the weekend. That she had been so sick that they rushed her into surgery and put her at the top of the transplant list. When she does it to me I stop her and say isn't the recovery time on a transplant at least a month or two. The hospital shouldn't have let you out. Realizing I've caught her in a lie she rushes to the front desk. Claims she shouldn't be here and that she needs to go home or she'll pop her surgery stitches. A few days later she was fired when she couldn't provide proof of the surgery. She tried to sue but no lawyer would take her case. It was hilarious. I'm a librarian and I'm actually very proud of this one. Back then I was in charge of the cinema and music section of my library. This guy came with his son and asked me where to find our Puff Daddy CDs. We have one and I show him on the shelves where to find it. Then I was called in another place of the library and go check on my colleagues. On my way back to the music section, I see him coming out of the library and I don't know why. Maybe he seemed dodgy, but I have a feeling something is wrong. I go check, the CD is gone. It's not appearing on his library card, so he didn't borrow it. I have a look if he didn't misplace it but it's not there. The guy just stole the freaking Puff Daddy CD with his 8 years old son from a public library where you can borrow IT for free. At this point I do nothing because we have no proof and no security camera. A few weeks later, the son and his sister, 8 and 10 years old, come to the library again and borrow some CD. I'm watching them and to my knowledge, they didn't steal anything. 
and I don't want to confront them because it would break my heart to have them stopping to come to the library because of their father balls. But this whole story still bother me. So a few months later, I decide to try something. I still had the stolen CD barcode and I just decided to add it to their library card, as if they borrowed it. Worst case scenario, they say they don't have it and I apologize and say that it's a mistake from the library. A few days later they arrive, take some documents, return some, and just before leaving I proceed to explain them that they still have a document, a Puff Daddy CD that they need to return. The look of panic in their eyes and incomprehension was just delightful. They didn't say anything and a few days later they came back with the CD. I don't really care about Puff Daddy, and we could easily have replaced it, but just for the principle, it was one of my greatest victories. The best part of that one is not that they were taught a lesson not to steal, but rather they now probably think the library has some magical method of knowing when an item leaves, even if it isn't properly checked out. They got some senses or something which means they'll likely never do it again in any library, due to the futility. Nicely done. I helped an older woman who mistakenly rented a room in her house to the most evil family I've ever met. She offered the two rooms and private bathroom to the family of four because the house they were renting caught fire and they were forced out into a hotel. She just wanted to help. Took them dinners out to the hotel and all the insane things you'd imagine the nicest person in the world to do. So they stabbed her in the back, never paid rent, abused the heck out of her laundry machine and ate her food. So I went over one day and could hear the toilet running from the hallway. They didn't give a crap about wasting water. So I grabbed a recorder and knocked on the door asking if I could come in and check on the running toilet. The mother just banged on the door back at me so loud it sounded like she was going to break the door. Then shouted at me through the door about how she was going to bury the old woman in the backyard. She eventually let me in. I fixed the toilet and moved on to other projects around the house. Figured that was over with. Nope. About 15 minutes later I see a cop car in the driveway. Okay, this is bulls. But I guess I should go talk to them. Cop sees me coming and as soon as I was within earshot he starts lecturing me about how illegal it is to harass tenants. I stopped him and said you're yelling at me without even asking for my side of the story. Would you like to hear what actually happened? So I played the recording. He spun around and unleashed hack fury on this woman for lying to him. All while I stood there smiling at her from over his shoulder. I'll never forget that feeling of actual justice in the middle of a 8 month long nightmare. Please tell me the tenants were removed. I was around 15 years old and had a package delivered to my house. My CK neighbor came over, paced back and forth in front of the door before smoothly opening our gate, coming to the door, and picking up my package. I opened the door as she was walking off and she turned white as a ghost when she heard the door open. When I asked her WTF she was doing with my package, she explained to me that she was going to protect it for me, that she didn't know it was mine. Before I demanded she hand over my package and leave, I snapped at this lady, which was abnormal for shy little 15 year old me. I was furious because what was inside that package was a gift for my mother, who was at work at the time. I'll never forget that. One of my staff, who is unfortunately family with the owner so he's not getting canned anytime soon, is the biggest liar I have ever met. We'll call him Jim. He lies about everything, regardless of importance. He's been caught and lies multiple times and really just doesn't care. If someone is sick, guaranteed he will be off the next day having caught whatever someone had. My whole department is female. Five females, except for him. One day almost all of us were suffering from some horrible period cramps. Everyone was complaining about the pain but no one said it was because of their period. Because it's usually pretty obvious why. The HR department has a wonderful supply of meds and so I had to empty their stock of my doll and heat pads. Some of the staff was teasing that they will bring chocolate as a peace offering before entering our department. The next day he emails in that he's sick and he caught the horrible stomach bug all the ladies in the department had. He's so sore he can't move. Has a migraine. Blah blah. Word spread quickly and Jim has forever been mocked as the dude who had to take time off work for his period. He won't be let go but he does get his paid oct when he flakes off like this. It was worth it to be able to make fun of him forever. When I moved out of a house I had been renting years ago, 
The landlady decided that she wanted to keep my security deposit. We had been on friendly terms for the 5 plus years I had lived there. She even invited me to dinner parties at her house. I had been a model tenant, so I don't know why she turned on me aside from pure greed. When I persisted in asking her for the money she started making up reasons to keep it, claiming that she had to do costly cleanup of some mess I allegedly left. By luck. Before things went sour I had arranged to store some furniture at the property until I was ready for it. When I went to retrieve it, it was obvious that the property was exactly as I had left it, and the details of what she had claimed were entirely false. She had no answer when I confronted her with this fact, and she finally grudgingly paid up. I still see her around and she tries to act like nothing ever happened, but she is dead to me. How someone can let a little money trump all reason and integrity is beyond me. In a large business meeting, boardroom style, something went wrong on a project my company did. The executives were nervous as heck because we were being blamed for a failure and the client was demanding we pay for it. The thing is I was the project manager for this job and had recently been promoted. I warned the client about a potential problem when the project was underway, but they chose to ignore it and press on. Now that it was failing they wanted us to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to fix it, and our competitors were already about to take the next multi-million dollar sign project. So the client's manager outlines his case and asks when he can expect us to fix it for him, assuming we'll just cave in hopes of getting future business. That's my company's MO. They even said our on-site rep should have caught the problem so this whole thing was our fault. Our project manager clearly didn't know what he was doing otherwise he would have caught this. My boss was about to respond, but I gently interrupted. I basically said I was the on-site PM and did catch the problem immediately I have a few documents for your perusal. I had with me the printed email exchange where I warned about the problem and advised how to fix it, as well as the client's very clear response that they thought it was worth the risk and wouldn't change anything. The client's face turned red. He looked at my bosses and said they should have told him who I was. We wound up paying for the fix anyway in exchange for being awarded the next project. This kind of thing happens constantly in my business, though usually on a much smaller, less grand, and less public scale. My entire job is sire. You should have told us ahead of time so I know which lies to use. I come from a smallish town. Brother made it the MLB, was at the grocery store with my dad, who was wearing the MLB team's jacket at the time. Checker says to us you know I helped that kid get to the majors. My dad just politely pulled out his id and told him to check the last name. Checker just laughed embarrassingly, immediately shut up, and gave us extra Monopoly tickets for our time. At work one day a co-worker started telling me and another co-worker a story about being stopped by the police. He went into great detail about how he stopped at a gas station for a drink and there were two cops standing out front and nobody else in the parking lot. He gave the cops a wave, being nice, bought his drink, and left. Less than a hundred feet down the street these same two cops pulled him over. They told him that they smelled weed when he got out of the car. He asked the cops if they could smell it now. Standing next to his open window, they said no but it was obvious it came from him. They asked if they could search his car, which he angrily let them, telling them he wanted the cops to climb through his hot car to find nothing. While one cop did the search the other cop told him to calm down. He looked nervous, to which he said I'm not pee, I'm angry. You didn't smell weed, you smell the shaved head and tattoos. The cops found nothing and let him go about his business. The lie. It was my story. It happened to Emmy months before and I told that story at work back then. He even quoted me. Except I said long hair and tattoos. A few minutes into the story my other co-worker and I start giving each other the side eye. Realizing he was literally telling me my own story. I think he realized it towards the end because he quickly finished up the story and left without ever mentioning it again. We never brought it up either. I had such a bad case of second hand embarrassments for the guy. Plus everybody else already heard about it and he was forever branded the liar. When his ex-girlfriend sent me a picture of a pregnancy test, but couldn't hold it up to a daily newspaper, she broke and admitted it was fake. Queen of douche. Frick that crap. I had a girl do the same thing. Found out that she lived in so many places because that's how she makes money. Fake abortions. It made my heart hurt and my dong feel sick. 
I caught my mom eating my Halloween candy when I was little after she told me it wasn't her. Getting new candy from the store because of it was pretty satisfying. In my house, that was called dad tax and everyone had to pay. I knew my ex-wife was cheating but didn't tell her that I knew. Took her out to dinner and I casually asked questions about who she had been spending time with while I was at sea. She barely worked so she had to spend her time doing something. She failed to mention the guy that had been staying at my house for nearly 2 months. The guy she had to call the cops on just to get to leave because I was coming home in 2 days. So I slid her a copy of the police report that was filed for the incident and watched as she crumbled over the fact she had been caught. And I didn't have to say a word. Divorce court was even more satisfying. In case anyone was wondering. Please elaborate on court. Lol. Sued a bloke for not paying his mortgage. He filed an application claiming he'd never been served with the court proceedings. And he'd just found them in his front yard. He also managed in two pages to set out 11 separate claim defenses to the claim. Oh and he also claimed he didn't speak at a good English. Something didn't stack up. So I ran some court file searches, and discovered he'd defaulted on another mortgage a few years earlier and filed the exact same affidavit back then. Even included the exact same photos of the court documents supposedly lying in his yard. The case did not end well for him. I played college basketball, and one of my teammates had a chronic condition with the truth. My first summer, we were roommates, and I always suspected he was stealing my clothes. At one point, every player received a custom pair of Jordans in our school's colors, but within a week mine went missing. A month later, I noticed my roommate teammate was wearing a pair of Jordans. Later in the day we were in a gym and I waited until we were all relaxing, and he had the soles of his shoes facing forward as he sat. I told all of my other teammates what I suspected, and approached him. Hey, have you seen my Jordans? NAA, I already told you, now leave me alone, then why is my number written on the soles of the shoes you're wearing? The team equipment staff had predicted some shoes might go missing, so they had marked each pair. I made him take the shoes off right there, since I couldn't trust I'd get them back at the end of the day. After that, his nickname on the team was Simba, for being the Lion King. One more story, since people found the first amusing. We had an athletic trainer whose job it was to make sure we were taking care of our bodies. If we got hurt, it was his responsibility to make sure we were getting treatment before and after every practice or game. My teammate roommate had sprained his ankle earlier that week in practice, and the rule was if you weren't with the training staff getting treatment, then you weren't really hurt. Skipping treatment, but saying you were hurt, was a huge no-no with our coach. I wasn't there for my own injury, and the trainer comes up to say where's your roommate, he was supposed to be here 30 minutes ago, and practice starts soon, I didn't know, so the trainer calls him, over the phone, my roommate tells our trainer that he's just getting out of class on campus, and it'll take him at least another 20 minutes to get back, so no time for treatment, the trainer hung up the phone and stared at me with an incredulous look. This mf -er just told me he was on campus. I called his room phone. Once had a person work for me who would always call out and use her past health problems as a crutch to miss work all the time. One Monday she called in, gave me some generic illness excuse and said she couldn't get out of bed. That morning another department had a breakfast meeting at IHOP, IHOP, and saw her there eating breakfast with her friends looking like she was in perfect health. The picture evidence sent to me was oh so satisfying. I was in a bar having some beers when I feel a tap on my shoulder. It was a guy I went to school with. I didn't really hang out with him back then, but decided to catch up and share stories anyways. At one point he mentioned sleeping with a girl I knew very well. A girl I knew for a fact was a virgin until after she graduated. I just kind of nodded and let him go. Then, I said something along the lines of oh, I actually know her very well, we'll have to hit her up. She comes out and drinks with me all the time. He turned white. The look of horror in his eyes was great. My sister is a really cute blonde. She's heard of plenty of wild nights she's had that have never happened. Some guys are just buttholes who play pretend a lot. I had a boss who kept on getting angry at me because I wasn't doing what he told me to do. Finally one day, I decided to start writing down exactly what he told me dated it, and kept record of it. But then one day came where inevitably, what the heck are you doing? 
exactly what you told me to do. I never told you to do that. Well, I have it written here. Pulls out note card on the 22nd of May 2016. You told me specifically to do this task, exactly like this, and never do it any other way. I finally won. I started standing up for myself a bit more in the office, and I was respected for it. Someone put down two sevens, but I had all four of them. Ah, the time honored game of bulls. Pretty inexcusable honestly. I'm a single mother and I took my car in to get serviced post Thomas fire. I expected that my cabin air filters were full of crap and soot and I didn't want my kids breathing that so I popped them out and replaced them myself before taking the car in. I get to the dealership when it reopens and say I need the oil changed and a once over. About 3 hours later, I get a call that says man, you need a new timing belt, a new starter, and cabin air filters. I was like, oh really I said, I'll be right there because I want to see what they look like, and the guys actually showed me some really black filters. I pulled out my receipt for the filters bought the day before and said, so, were you going to put dealer filters in or just leave in the filters from pep boys that I bought and installed yesterday he was toast. I asked about the timing belt, because my car doesn't have one, it has a chain, and said, so, can you show me the timing belt issues he took me to the car and popped the hood and then started looking for something that wasn't there. I told him he could just stop right there and get the manager. The manager was sort of annoyed and insisted there must have been a mistake and my guy must have called the wrong person. Until I pointed out that he took me to the correct vehicle and that my name matched the paperwork the guy had been holding. He offered to do the oil change for free but by that point I just said, no, I'll take it somewhere I trust. I dated this guy off and on for about a year. Things didn't always add up but I was young and dumb and made excuses. During that year his mom passed away from pancreatic cancer, he relapsed and then went to rehab, and after he got out he moved a few states away for a fresh start near where his grandparents lived. We decided we were done at that point but he still emailed occasionally and a couple times he'd randomly show up on my doorstep saying he was in town and needed to see me. After one such surprise visit I emailed him and said that I couldn't keep doing this and to please not come by anymore. A year or so passed and I got a bug up my butt one night to google him, and found a baby registry with his name on it. Looked up the baby mom on Facebook and found pictures of them together living together just a few hours away and during the time that he and I were dating, I was able to determine that when we first started seeing each other they weren't together, but when he was supposedly in California and missed me so much and didn't want to be with anyone else he was actually just a few hours away with her. The kicker, his mom was still alive too. It became clear to me that he was a pathological liar and I'd basically fallen in love with someone that didn't really exist. Here's the satisfying part. Literally the next day he showed up on my doorstep. The first thing I said is where's W? Baby mama? Does she know you're here? His face dropped. He started stammering making excuses that I didn't know what was really going on. He even insisted that his mom was dead. I felt like I was in a girl power movie moment as I told him to get the frick off my porch and never come see me again. Shit but employee I used to manage called off and I knew he was bullshitting. Said he was sick as heck until I showed him and the GM his Facebook had checked him into about 6 different bars during a block party. At the time he was supposed to be working. Rookie error. Skyving 101 is to make sure nothing is on social media. The best times are when you've got other people standing off to the side so you can give them a little glance to see if they've caught onto the bulls. Guest lied to me that he paid for two nights and wouldn't leave the room. Made me go through this giant ordeal of calling all the front desk employees and double check all their work. He threw a huge fit calling me a B. Stupid CETC. He jets out of the parking lot and the police I called pull him over and take him in. Co-workers and I still play it on the camera and laugh about it. Well props to him. He managed to get the second night for free in the end. In jail. Best friend and I decided to be roommates in college. And our closet was shared too. 
For girls that usually means we will inevitably borrow each other's clothes, since it's all out for display. So we agreed we to share as long as we asked the other person before wearing a piece. I quickly realized that she was taking a lot of my clothes without asking me and leaving them in her hamper, which wasn't a big deal because I'd just take them back. I started going home some weekends and when I came back items of clothing would go missing. So from then on I'd take pictures of my drawers so I could tell if they've been moved around when I came back. One day she was packing to go on a road trip and at the last minute went into the closet and pulled out some of my clothes and quickly stuffed them in her suitcase hoping I wouldn't see. During her trip I texted her asking if she knew where those clothes were and she said she had no idea. I kept quiet through all of this until one day I had enough because she had taken one of my favorite shirts, wore it while I was gone one weekend, and shoved it back covered in stains. I also found more of my things moved around, like makeup, toiletries, and even my GoPro handle had been taken off the camera and put back poorly. I have terrible anxiety so it took a lot to confront her. But I pulled out the shirt and told her it had been moved from its position and stained. She denied it and said she'd never touch my things without asking me because she'd never do that to her friends. I proceeded to show her pictures of my closet moved around. How I have been tracking my things. How I had seen her specifically grab my clothes at the last minute before her road trip. She was dumbfounded and flustered. And continued to say how it was an accident or she's too shy to ask. I told her I had been watching this since November it was April, and the look on her face was so satisfying. Eventually she said sorry I won't borrow your things anymore which was fine, but made me realize how cautious I have to be from now on. Ex-girlfriend told me she was going to a girls only pool party with some of her fellow waitresses from the restaurant she worked at. I had felt something weird going on for a bit and had put a lot of effort into making that night a surprise date night. I worked that morning, while she worked in the evening. While she was at work I cleaned the whole apartment, that we shared. Cooked a fancy surf and turf dinner with filet mignon, lobster tails, butter pasta, expensive wine, etc. Also rented a few movies I knew she would like. So when after dinner she suddenly told me she was going to this pool party at around 10pm and I couldn't come I was pretty exasperated and knew something was not right. Noticed she was putting her phone face down every time she received a text about this party. While she is putting on her hottest bikini to wear under her clothes on her way over to this party I decide to look at the phone and it's some dude from her work. Under the name Angela in her phone, telling her he can't wait to see her, can't stop thinking about the other night, etc. Scroll down a bit and they even said they loved each other. There's not really a worse feeling in the world when you are in love with someone and they do that to you. She comes back into the room and cue one of the worst nights I've ever had as she blames all of this on me not proposing to her quickly enough we were 22, relatively poor, and in college and I did want very much to marry her. She trashes the apartment, breaks the screen off of my laptop. Cuts up a few of my favorite shirts, and breaks my phone after going through it looking for some sort of justification for her actions and finding none by throwing it at the wall and stomping on it. But hey, it was satisfying knowing that I wasn't going crazy and I learned some valuable life lessons. I did want very much to marry her. Sounds like you dodge a bullet, mate. I had a really low serial number $2 bill. Something like 00000100. Crisp, new. I showed my cousin while he was visiting one day. It went missing afterwards. A few weeks later, was at my cousin's house and noticed it hidden while he was tooling around his, his closet looking for something. Lost my crap. He denied it, insisted it was his and that my uncle had given it to him. Uncle came in wondering what the ruckus was about, and I was able to tell him the serial number without looking at it. I got it back, but the bastard had scrunched it up in places. Frick you, Brandon. 40 years later I'm still not forgiving that crap. I was 16 and was seeing a girl who I had some doubt about. She would make up the most insignificant lies about stupid crap but it wasn't malicious so I'll let it slide, until things escalated. Her dad had a friend, John, who had cancer. We went to visit him 200 miles away and he looked really bad. She acted like she didn't give a crap, 
About two weeks later we were at a party and she started crying about how John had died and she was absolutely devastated so I comforted her. About a week after that I went to dinner at her parents and her dad said I just got off of the phone with John and they're saying he's reacting well with the chemo her face dropped and she couldn't look me in the eye but I knew I had her so I finished my dinner and went home. I phoned her later and told her not to call me ever again or I'll tell her dad about her lie. She didn't call again. I still don't know what happened to poor John. A bonus lie I remember her telling me about a month before the John incident. She told me she was in the school play in the lead role of Romeo and Juliet. And she needed to kiss the guy in the finale and was I okay with it? We didn't go to the same school so I didn't question it and said it was okay. She made a noticeable job of telling me how considerate she was being in asking my permission. I just thought it was another lie. After I broke up with her, her friend told me my ex had kissed a guy in her English class. They were studying Romeo and Juliet at the time apparently. I'm glad I got out of there when I did. TLDR. Tech support tells kid he is going to be arrested. I was working in tech support at an ISP on the afternoon evening shift. It is a smaller ISP so tech support all sits in one office about a stone's throw from each other. In the evenings there are only about 12 people working until about 7pm when it drops to about 7 people. We got a call one night from a kid. Sounded about 12, who was using a deep voice trying to get info on an IP address from us. This isn't uncommon for kids who are gaming to call tech support to try and get information so they can DDoS someone they are mad at. The first person he got followed protocol and asked if he had a warrant then hung up. We can't give out that type of info to anyone without a warrant. Same thing happened to 3 other people over the course of about 15 minutes before he changed up his act. I got him at that point and he said that he was agent something or other from the FBI and he needed info on the IP address. Have you ever heard a 12 year old try to sound like an adult? I played along and asked him if he had the account info he was looking for. He panicked at that point and said I should have it and John in customer service should have sent it to me. I informed him there isn't a John in customer service. They worked in the same office as us so I knew them all. He was quiet for a few seconds before he tentatively tried another name and I told him I know that person. He got super excited and it was kind of funny listening to him think he was getting through. I asked him for the account info because that person had not sent it to me and the kid hung up. The next few attempts were the kids pretending to be one of my co-workers and telling people to give him the info. Granted this was at about 830pm and that specific co-worker had gone home at 7. At that point we were getting annoyed and just hung up on him whenever we heard his voice. As 9pm rolled around, one of my co-workers was very upset that she hadn't gotten him yet. She had this whole plan on what she was going to say to him and was super excited a few minutes after 9 when we all heard her yell across the office I got the IP guy. We all went on break or put calls on hold to come listen to what her plan was. The kid was pretending to be our co-worker again, which was very funny for us because the person he was talking to sits right next to the person he was imitating. She acted like she was going to give him everything. He gave her the IP address he wanted info on and she got him to sing like a bird on what he was looking for. After about a minute she said thank you sir, we just finished tracing your call and I am required to inform you that a member of the FBI will be swinging by shortly to pick you up to answer some questions. We could hear the kid flip out for a few seconds over her headset and then he hung up. We all lost it. That was the funniest thing we had all seen in a while and we didn't hear from him again. Love the story. I wonder what and where that kid's persistence has gotten him in life now. This one is comical. And other than being a crappy job, my old job cleaning retail centers was almost always good for a laugh when it came the crap butt workers the company would hire. Guy who didn't have a license, a car, and was certainly too lazy to walk the 4 miles to work. I rode my bike 9 miles every dang night. And yes, it was uphill to this store where I was working, though I got to coast for the most part on my way home. He was driven to work, every day, by his grandmother, who was probably late 60s, or early 70s. Second day of work he says he needs a week off because his grandmother, the one who drove him to work, was sick and in the hospital, okay. Then his grandmother shows up at the workplace, to buy herself some new slippers that the location had on sale, with him in tow. He saw me, and the look of realization on his face was glorious. 
company was sucky and would fire people for lying about why they missed work, but for some reason would take weeks to fire someone who was a repeat no call no show. I must have been 9 or 10. My friends and I were all going through the same doll phase, so we would bring our favorites to each other's house and play. As my friend was leaving I noticed a few of my dolls missing. She was holding them hostage in her doll limo. I just knew it. As she was walking outside I casually said, Oh I think you might have grabbed my doll on accident. Flustered she checked her limo and pulled out my dolls. Got you. She also stole some of my doll's clothing. I searched her room when she went to bathroom and stole it back. Stopped playing dolls with her. Not completely relevant, but I doubt such a specific thread would come up anytime soon. I caught someone who was trying to convince me I was lying. When I was little, my mom was driving me to school. We went the more rural of the two possible roads, and on our way we saw a wolf. So we stopped the car and watched it from a distance for a little while. I told this to my aunt recently and she didn't believe me, because this isn't and never was a wolf area. My mom, even though she was with me, didn't get involved in the argument. The argument was at a standstill at that point. I claimed it was a wolf. She claimed it was a jackal, which are not in this area either, but it's maybe a bit more likely. With all the wonders of modern technology, she opened her phone, googled something, and gave the phone to me. Does that look like what you saw? It was a scrawny thing with a pointy nose and red brown fur. Definitely not. Well of course you didn't see that, because that's a picture of a wolf. Before she could take her phone back, I read out loud the title below the picture from a news article it belonged to. Pack of jackals found in southern Serbia. She furiously took her phone from me and was too embarrassed to keep arguing. So I won by default. I will claim that was a wolf I saw on my deathbed. What a stupid reason to erode your niece or nephew's trust and respect in you. Although you'd probably had that ruined long before. I had strep throat. So I called out sick to work. I was sick two days. My new manager called me in and said I had a pattern of abusing my sick time. And that I would not be paid for my sick time. She explicitly mentioned that I always called three days in a row. And that I had exceeded the acceptable amount of occurrences for the year. This was in October. I had a sick kid in February for one day. She started in June. So where was she getting this pattern from? I had three days over two occurrences for the entire year. Both with doctor's notes. Well under the five occurrences. Each with up to three days sick. That HR puts a soft limit at. Unluckily for her. I knew our schedule tracking system and how to get at my punched missed hours. And I knew our policy regarding sick time and how abuse was handled. So I printed the policy. My last four years of attendance. Along with my co-workers. Full stop. I sat down with her. And she reiterated the accusation of abuse. I pulled out my last year. With two calls on it. She said the pattern was from before she started. So I pulled out the previous four years in the policy. 10 occurrences over 4 years. Remember that HR calls violation over 5 occurrences within 1 year. She said that I had more sick calls than anyone else. So I pulled theirs out too. And I was actually on the lower half of occurrences. My sick bank was near capped out. How would that be possible if I was a flagrant abuser of the system? The backpedaling started. She said that she never said I wouldn't get paid. I pulled out my phone and played the recording for her. She thought my number was a landline and said I wasn't allowed to furnish cell phone messages while at work. I told her I get paid or I quit over hostile work environment, which would mean a very easy unemployment case, which would actually have to be paid out by my employer in this case, which would mean my manager would be cooked. I got paid for my sick time, and she made the next 3 years absolutely miserable for me. So unhappy story overall, but I still remember that one time. But for desktop publishing, I was in my 20s, an ad designer for a local department store. The boss was out, and a co-worker, who had been there many years, and was jaded and grumpy all the time, was put in charge for the day. I brought an ad to her for approval, and she found some nitpicky thing that she wanted adjusted. I knew that it was just bulls on her part, so she could feel powerful. I took the ad back to my desk, worked on something else for a while. Then brought it back absolutely unchanged. She looked at it and said oh, that looks much better, and approved it. I never let on that it was the exactly same version she'd rejected earlier. 
Here's a good one. I'm in the military, British army, my dad bought me a nice shock watch to say good luck when I was in training. About halfway through we go on exercise. Coming back on the coach everyone is always tired and sleeps the whole way back. I take my watch off at the beginning of the ride. Put it in the top of my day sack but I forgot to zip it up. Obviously it falls out and I forget about it. The corporal does a sweep of the coach and asks if anyone lost one 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 lost We spend the weekend sorting kit out and I realize I can't find my watch. I feel crap that I've lost it. Sunday night I head to the showers and the showers are literally a big box with about 10 shower heads. Plenty of lads in there. I see the guy who claimed to lose his watch and say crap that's my freaking watch he's a 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 Called him a freaking thief and threw his towel in the shower and walked off while everyone got pee that they share a room with a guy who steals crap. TL. DR. Friend found out GF was cheating on him to start a 6 plus hour car ride she couldn't escape from. Not me, but a friend of mine was just starting a long road trip to drop his girlfriend off after a trip. 6 plus hours. And they stopped at a gas station at the start where she ran in to get some snacks and use the restroom but left her phone there. Up pops a text message from a guy saying something like you back from your trip yet babe. She comes back and he had enough time to compose himself to calmly ask her question after question slowly circling closer to the point where she realizes the jig is up and then he gets to go off on her as she tearfully admits to everything over the next several hours. I never want to be cheated on. But if I ever had been I wouldn't be opposed to them being a captive audience for several hours. It doesn't make you feel any better, trust me. A co-worker was a military retiree who claimed to have been everywhere. Someone might say, I spent a week in Cambodia. He'd say, yeah, I was there once. Stopped over on my way to Thailand. We figured he was bullshitting most if not all the time. So we started inventing places. My cousin is traveling in Argentina. And he's at this mountain village called Burra to Salsa. Him. Oh. Yeah. We did a joint military exercise with Argentina back in the 80s and stopped off there. US. Did you visit the temple on Blueberry Hill? Him. Heck. Yeah. Everyone in my outfit visited. Total bullshitter. I was sitting with a couple friends and a guy I didn't know too well, all playing cards. We start swapping stories and the guy I didn't know starts telling the story of a time he went to a strip club. However, he had lifted the story word for word from a YouTube video, only changing the names. Rooster Teeth Animated Adventures. I started playing the video on my phone halfway through his story and connected it to the TV. Bet that was awkward. When I lived with my dad I had a cash bank that I kept hidden. I was positive about the sum of money I had saved up. I was saving up for the Xbox One Xbox 360 which was coming out. And when I counted it, it was short. Like $20 short. I also had a webcam on my computer and since my family was not computer literate I set it up on a time lapse. One picture every 10 seconds. Whenever I left the house. Sure enough. Suspected family member went into my room, went right for the stash and stole from me. I confronted them at dinner in front of everyone. They denied it, others believed them, and then I put the photo I printed out on the table. Best macaroni and cheese I ever ate. An employee in my restaurant clocked out too. Five hours later than expected one night. When I asked him via messenger if there was a good reason this has happened, he replied hey man. It was very busy last night. I believe I made 80% of the day's turnover. 6 hours shift. That would be about $850. I immediately look up on my computer to verify if that's true and I find out that he has come a bit late at work and actually made only $200. Then the guy who works at the 7-Eleven next door told me that my guy was there having coffee for like 2 hours last night. I had to send him a long message. With many screenshots about that. A girl led me on only to tell me she couldn't date me because of my race. Well, she tried to lead me on again. But I made it a point to show as little interest as possible. 
crap like walking past her without acknowledging I'd seen her and stonewalling any flirting attempts. She then gets the idea to make a friend of mine like her to make me jealous. But she picked one of my absolute best friends. So immediately, he told me what was happening. She was always sending him and I the same snaps and nudes and saying she missed us and crap like that. I think she assumed that we wouldn't talk to each other about this. Well one night he and I were hanging out playing Halo. And we get a snap from her. It's her in the shower with a lot of steam. So I send her a picture of him looking disappointed. And he sent her a picture of me looking disappointed. She didn't talk to us for a few months after that. I worked with a guy who was extremely lazy. Every day in one 8 hour shift there were at least 2 hour long smoke breaks and a combined hour of being on the shitter. Additionally, he was constantly on his phone when he was at work. So one day we were both sanding a long steel rail. Him on one side and I on the other side. While he was in the bathroom I made a small mark above his portion of the rail to be able to tell where he started. At lunchtime, roughly 4 hours later, I had done about 20-30 featuring of rail. He'd done done about 5. I questioned him about it to which his reply was nah bruh. I've done at least 20 featuring. He was fired a short time later for being unproductive. It was bit sweet. He was a decent guy. Just sucked at our job. Yeah sometimes I feel bad if halfway decent people get fired but at the same time. It's their own fault for always calling in. Or being lazy. I think I do close to the same job you do but maybe not long steel rails. I work with large metal plates endeavor the edges countersink tap the holes if they need to be tapped. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.